It's that time of the year again. The first test day of a new season, so let's take a closer look at some details of the new F1 cars. Let's start with McLaren. One of the first tasks when testing a new car is to use the so-called front wheel wake rake, so you can verify if the flow patterns behind the front axle are the same as in CFD and wind tunnel. That is important to understand all other data you collect afterwards. McLaren also did an interesting test where they parked the car with running engine in front of their garage and watched the temperatures increase, which is important to know to improve reliability. Remember, F1 cars don't have fans. McLaren is using a P-shaped inlet this year. To reduce the size of the blower nozzle, they block the lower part with a piece of foam, which is connected to the blower with zip tie. That is important as it would be easy to forget the foam piece. Very interesting was a look underneath the cover where we could see two thin radiator nets and sensor tubes to measure the pressure distribution. We can see the internal covers and seals to reduce the drag of internal flow. And we can now see a Red Bull style outlet which is pointing at the beam wing. Also like McLaren, Ferrari uses a large slot in the upper section of the bodywork to guide cooling air to the back without disturbing downforce producing parts below. And mirrors are interesting this year. These veins help to reduce the wake behind the mirror and hence reduce drag. Also Ferrari used a large front wheel wake rake and measured the front wing deflection. Ferrari and McLaren both seem to start a new trend of larger side pod inlets, while McLaren claimed to have focused on aero efficiency. Also, we currently have an engine freeze, but engines shouldn't get less efficient and shouldn't need more cooling. So what are teams are doing here? Why do more and more teams have larger side pod inlets in a P shape? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Also interesting is Ferrari's new rear wing with a lower center section. This would allow them to use the same pillar with DRS for higher downforce wings like for Monaco. In times of a budget cap, that could be useful. Ferrari traditionally has a side pod cooling package with multiple thin radiators and it's the same this year. And note how their floor is supported from the gearbox. The first day of testing in a season is traditionally the first time you see the real new Red Bull. And it's usually an important moment because Red Bull always brings something interesting. Not this year. The new Red Bull looks pretty much like the old one and it seems like they concentrated on fixing the old car's issues and some say they even used the same chassis as last year. The Red Bull cooling package has an interesting V-shape again like last year and they seem to use thick air-to-air -air intercoolers in the left-hand side. This package helps to keep a huge path underneath for the undercut flow to flow around the car to the back and their floor edge is a piece of art, creating many useful vortices. And of course, the Red Bull outlet pointing at the beam wing is there again. Mercedes created a Hannibal Lecter nose which connects to the first element and they tried different positions of the inlet today. Mercedes has a clear separation between their horizontal and vertical side pod inlet and we can see nicely how their front wing tips create as much outwash as possible. As Martin tried two different noses, one connects to the second element, one to the first element. So in the fourth year of these regulations, Teams are still not sure which one is better, so the gains must be minimal. Aston Martin uses a large side pod inlet as well with a slight P-shape, but here both sections are combined to one inlet. Interesting is their step in the shark fin, which could create two vortices which cancel each other out. That is important, so the tip vortex of their larger shark fin doesn't hit the rear wing, which would reduce downforce. The larger shark fin helps to keep the front wheel wake away from the rear wing and corners. Their side pod has a very slim shape and their airbox dives down quickly for more downwash which drags clean air to the rear wing. Alpine kind of goes their own way. Their nose connects to the second element and they are the only team with an underbite. Also their inlets combine to a P-shape and they have two thin almost flat lying radiators in the side pod. After the radiator package, they have a deep water slide to drag clean air down to the beam wing area. Haas is the only team with more conventional side pod inlets. We can see a thin radiator package 
and lots of small hoses to measure the pressure in the radiator duct. Also, we can see an interesting outwashing front wing end plate detail here. Toro Rosso shows a very similar design to last year's Red Bull, which is no surprise because they moved their aero department to Red Bull's technology campus in Milton Keynes and used the same facilities. Engineers have lunch together. At Williams we see a bit of conservative design with a huge sidewall to keep the front wheel brake outboard and with a relatively small undercut area compared to the competition. Also, they use two large rakes at the same time, which is something you want to avoid because the downstream one is just seeing the wake of the forward one. But sometimes teams do that to shortcut the test schedule. Interesting to see is the underside of the front wing, and it could be nothing, but we do see a black box and one or two air hoses coming from the radiator duct reaching to the rear. Could this be a bypass for the radiator package to blow air at certain parts at the back? Check out my other video which describes the system in more detail. And the Sauber has the most interesting side pod, which looks like it melted in the sun. You usually want to keep a high side wall to keep the front rear wake outboard, but let's see how their idea works on track. Their mirror shape is definitely interesting as well. I hope you like this little insight and if you want to work in F1 as well, check out my online courses with the links below.